I'm Jeffrey Villardouin in uh, the wonderful For King or Country mod based on vanilla. This is an early mod for Medieval 2 Total War. It's not for Kingdoms. And I already uh, showed a video before of a battle. This is going to be another battle. And this time I'm using an AI, a battle AI that changes a little bit how uh, the AI develops its uh, deployment. It spreads out the units a little bit more. We hear some music from the period, some pipe and drum music, and I'm commanding the parliament here, and our musketeers are taking aim. They are deployed in the Dutch formation, so there are battalions of a company of pikemen surrounded by companies of musketeers. Here's our artillery. Some enemy cavalry here is attacking on the flanks. And it has been turned back. Another thing that this uh, battle AI submold does is it makes the cavalry not attack pikemen. And mainly attacks on the flanks. So the AI cavalry attacks our cavalry on the flanks. Here are some uh, royalist musketeers. The musketeers move forward. But they don't, you see, they're slightly more spread out. They don't overlap anymore. Yeah? They're a little bit better. Sometimes they overlap, but if there's an overlap, there's only maybe two units partially overlapping. So it's a little bit better than what we've seen in the, what we've seen in the previous uh, video clip. So again, this is the side of the parliament, much uh, more organized in battalions. Unfortunately, uh, the Royalists, the AI army, cannot keep their formation. So this is something I want to try a little bit. I, I had managed it once, but it had some issues. I want to try once more and see if I can do this. Now, my battle AI was released as part of a, some kind of post somewhere, but it wasn't officially released in any way, so I may do a more official release at some point. So again, we see here some... Uh, uh, Royalist Musketeers, some AI Musketeers, skirmishing forward. They're slightly more spread out. Our men are under attack. We must act now. And there's some cavalry there. I think that's their general. Here's again. Here there's some overlap here. So these two units are overlapping. So it's not perfect. And then there's a skirmishing Musketeer unit a bit further down. There's still this issue that the range is relatively short, and so they tend to overlap. Our men are under attack. We need to act. The enemy general has no honor. He flees the field of battle and abandons his... Men. So here's the enemy general. He's been routed. So this is another issue. Uh, the issue is here that the uh, the generals are our issued are with carbines. They, they, they have carbines. carbines. Okay, here's our lines again. And carbines have a shorter range than muskets. So they come within range of the musketeers and then they get shot. So they get sniped by by the human players musketeers and uh, we found a solution to this in uh, the 1648 mod we gave them carbines that have a longer range than musketeers let's say they were trained to fire at a longer range with the carbines and so they stay for the back we need to act. you can actually fire at longer range with a carbine than a musket because muskets fire straight ahead straight forward but if you fire an angle shot with a carbine, you can actually fire at a longer range. And this is basically what those lifeguards, bodyguards do in 1648. They fire slightly angle shots with their carbines. They are not as accurate, obviously, but they can have a longer range, so they cannot be sniped by the human players, musketeers, or by artillery. So here is some of our cavalry. Our men are under attack. We need to act. Light cavalry, they've uh, routed an enemy unit of musketeers. Unfortunately, the AI uh, tends to break up its formation. So here they've attacked here with their pikemen, leaving the musketeers somewhere else. And now they've been routed, uh, they've been charged, and they were downhill. Our so they've been routed. Attack. We need to act. So here our troopers are attacking some enemy musketeers that have been cut off, they've been separated from their battalions. We try to do things around these issues with the 1648 battle AI and uh, we think we improved it a little bit. So here's our artillery rate of fire. Our musketeers are rotating the ranks so they're moving back and forth here. They moved also a little bit further back 
because uh, the enemy pikemen were approaching, but the enemy pikemen uh, were shaken by the fire of our artillery, and although they were not probably hit by our artillery, they were shaken enough that they retreated. So here's again some overlapping. Uh, there are two units here overlapping. So there's still unfortunately some overlapping with this AI that are made, but it's not as serious. Uh, the range, the fire range, here's a motor shot that came, but they missed. Um, uh, the enemy had already routed by the time the motor shot landed. Actually, it's the enemy board. I think the enemy has motors. I'm not sure who has the motors. But anyway, the motors missed. So this is another thing. Uh, motors fired angle shots, so they almost always missed. Whereas other artillery, uh, normal artillery, fought horizontal shots. Our men are under attack. We need to act. And so if they were well aimed, they would rip through the ranks and kill lots of people. And, you know. um, so here again, uh, the enemy musketeers, there's some overlapping again. So you see the company at the back is not firing because it's a company at the front. However, the company at the front is not so far forward that they kind of skirmish. They don't go like to within 50 meters of our lines. They stay relatively far back. So they managed to pull off some shots. Here some of the enemy units have been attacked by our pikemen and here our cavalry has attacked or is taking prisoners, some uh, routed unit. So the, uh, the purpose of the cavalry at this period was mainly to either attack other cavalry, enemy cavalry, or to chase down routed units. So here we have um, surrounded these few enemy pikemen about a dozen of them, they've been slaughtered. A couple of them survived and now they are running off. Here are some more enemy musketeers against them. A little bit of punching up, so the company in the rear is not firing. The company, one of the companies, the company in the front, I think. One of those the two companies, they were just totally fate. overlapping. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. One of those two companies has been routed, the other one is holding their ground. We're approaching with our pikemen. And so now the enemy musketeers go into melee. This was a common thing for musketeers at that time. Sometimes they had swords, but they preferred to go into melee by using their muskets as clubs because they were not really trained swordsmen. They had the swords just in case. But musketeers at this period usually were not really trained to fight with their swords. So they very often used their muskets as clubs if they had to fight in hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. So here we have this side some uh, uh, halberdiers. They are uh, armed with these interesting looking pole arms and not really halberds. halberds. They're more like pole arms or short pikes. So half-length pikes were sometimes used, but it was rare. They were mostly used by officers. Again, a little bit of an issue here. There's a company in front and another company behind. The gray uniforms are behind the ones at the front who have blue uniforms. And the guys with the gray uniforms kind of fire. And now we're attacking them with our pikemen. Their pikemen seem to have fled the field. There may be one or two units of pikemen still resisting somewhere. But the uh, musketeers have been cut off. So this is one issue that um, it was still an issue, this was not completely resolved. But you can see that the enemy is still fighting, it's fighting on. It's like nine minutes since the battle started and they're still fighting. Whereas with stainless steel or um, the vanilla, you know, the enemy was routed in three or four minutes. So it didn't last even half as long as this. The enemy army flees the field. The so we brought out the down. enemy. So there was an artillery unit. It was still in good order, but they were routed. But you can see, uh, it's been quite a long battle and a tough victory. This is a great victory worthy of only the mightiest of generals. And we suffered nearly 400 casualties. Compared to the previous case, we had 250 casualties in the previous battle. Uh, with uh, this mod. 
And you see also how all the units contributed equally, cavalry, musketeers, uh, artillery, all units, pikemen contributed equally. There was no OP unit. So the units lasted longer and the battle lasted longer and it's almost as good as in the 1648 mod. The 1648 mod battles are even harder because we made some more improvements. But the main, the key really is the range of muskets. This is absolutely key in having a balanced battle. Thank you for watching.